goes nicely into the, to the next topic. Okay. Well, we're well, not going to talk about what that means. Well, we can talk about it in the context of uh, Xi Jinping this year, you know, also becoming uh, another five-year term, president, presentator for life. Well, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's called a five-year term, but also we're saying he's going to lead for life, which is to say that the terms themselves is really just a mechanism and not some kind of like constitutional or legal restriction. It's, it's more like a suggestion. And then, you know, if you have enough power, you can manipulate it to your will. Yeah. And for Xi to have gotten this third quote unquote term means he's, he's got a lot of power. You want to say something, Shelley, 2023, be the year where you don't hold it in. Let it out. Uh, well, I mean, the thing about Xi Jinping and the terms is like, yeah, he has a lot enough power to do that. But is he all powerful? I think that a lot of the analysis after he got his five year, third five year term in Western media was like, he is all powerful now. There is no one to stand in his way. It's like we live in Xi Jinping's world now, yeah. you know. It's like at the end of Aladdin. Okay. Where Jafar wished to become a genie uh -huh. and he had unlimited power, but then like those things clamp on his wrist and you realize, oh no, he's actually been chained. Uh-huh. So you think Xi Jinping's been chained? I think so. He's he's chaining himself to the rise and fall of the Chinese Communist Party and it's not looking great for the Communist Party. Yeah. I mean, I think there was a lot of speculation back in 2012 when he first came to power and not a lot was known about him and he was kind of a quote unquote compromise mm -hmm. guy between like Jiang and Hu Jintao's people. And the idea was like, oh, maybe he will reform. I think like every time that a new CCP leader comes up, We've been saying always... it for so many years. Maybe, maybe this will be the one who will actually reform. Uh, so then when he started to make all these speeches and talk about, you know, the importance of communism and how we can't forget like the importance of uh, you know, the, like all of the stuff. And then I think there is still a little bit of denial about it, even in Chinese dissident circles about like, oh, maybe he's, mm -hmm. maybe he's just saying it. You know, the he, biggest river in China? <laughs> the Yangtze. The Yangtze. No, <laughs> it's denial. Uh-huh. Well, yes, I knew what you were going for. <laughs> Thank you for humoring me. Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was like a mat level joke, Chris. Oh, good. So you got it. Yes, I got it. Good. Yeah. Uh, anyway, but like, you know, he's, Xi Jinping has talked multiple times now about how Gorbachev destroyed the Soviet Union mm -hmm. by <laughs> capitulating to all this political reform stuff and how the CCP can never do anything like that. So, yeah. yeah. Though I, I am curious, like, I don't think anyone really knows what Xi Jinping wants necessarily, like, because most of these, you know, past 10 years has been him in a power struggle, just trying to not get purged himself. Uh, and even today, he, like, as we said, he doesn't have absolute power. There's lots of, you know, challenges facing the Chinese Communist Party, especially in the next year. So, like, what, what will he do when he feels secure? Like, what is his end goal? Is it he, just to make it to the end of his life? He just wants to sit in the shade and eat some honey. <laughs> hmm. Oh, if only history would allow that. Yeah. No, uh, he's going to delicious he's gonna Xinjiang crash. honey made from uh, yeah. But no, he's going to he's going to crash and burn with the Chinese Communist Party eventually if he lives that long. So Well, if he I mean, that's that's yeah. his fate. Unfortunately for him. But you know, he kind of he kind of had opportunities, multiple opportunities I think to actually implement reform as we in the West would see it or hope for. And he has not taken any of those opportunities. And in fact, he's doubled down on uh, his faith in the Chinese Communist Party. Do you think though, Matt, that if maybe we just invested a little more money, Xi Jinping might have a change of heart? You know, that's, that's a good idea. I'm gonna move some money to BlackRock. You'll thank me later. But yeah, I think some things that we, we should look for moving forward as far as like the general hostility side of things is uh, what happens to Tsung Ching Hong, oh, right? The... That's, that was Jiang's right-hand guy. Well, I mean, his right-hand guy that's still not in prison yet. Yeah, his right tentacled talon monster claw guy. 
Uh, yeah. So Zheng Qinghong is like, I guess, the de facto head of the Jiang faction now. Yeah. So if he ends up uh, in jail or like a piano falls on him. Uh, then we'll know we're living in a Looney Tunes cartoon. Uh, hey. I feel like we're already living in Looney Tunes, Shelley. Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately for Xi Jinping, his glorious rise to power was overshadowed uh, by the next big story. Uh, the, everyone freaking out that Hu Jintao was openly purged in a Stalinist kind of way in the, in the middle of the National People's Congress. Look, he just Chris, wanted those papers. Who's, who's Hu Jintao? I have no memory of this person. Who? Jintao? I'm not as clever as uh, as those guys were. I can't Abbott and Costello. Abbott and Costello. Uh, yeah, I mean, this that was that was crazy. Well, it also reminded me that like right before the Congress, there was like those rumors of a coup against Xi Jinping, and everyone was freaking out about that. And that was a case where we were like, uh, I don't think this is this is real. Uh, everyone, calm down. And then there was also kind of with this Hu Jintao purge, everyone was like, oh my gosh, this, it's like Stalin. And we and we were also kind of like, ah, I don't know. I think the thing is that it's so boring these meetings that anything that happens that's at not oh god rehearsed. Yeah, at the start. What what was it? Somebody like doing something about uh, like the talking about the tea or the tea leaves. There was some like crazy thing where somebody was trying to make a statement about like. Uh, the the what the what the tea at the party meant or something really oh wrong. yeah people were speculating about weird stuff like oh how like I forget what I I kind of remember what we were talking about but I forget what the specific thing yeah. was it's like how Xi Jinping was drinking tea during his speech I think well the reason the party congress is so boring is that everything that happens in the party congress has already been pre decided through months or years even of power struggling so. It's like it's like all they're doing is going through the forms. They're not actually voting on anything. They're not actually discussing anything in any meaningful way whatsoever. It's just like the final piece and the public piece of like a much larger thing. Oh no, I found it. It was it was from CNN as well. Here's why she's subtle gestures during speech worries people. Yes, yes. So that is right. Like he was like drinking tea a lot during a speech or yeah. something like that. And there was also some crazy take about how, like, Xi Jinping's authoritarianism represents whiteness. Do you remember that? That was, like, some uh, some commentator in Africa, uh, no, Australia. Oh, right. It was, like, a really weird article about how, like... Oh, yeah, here here it is. It's, uh, it was from ABC... Uh, Stan Grant, uh, to understand China, you need to understand whiteness, yet it's missing from the conversation. And it was this weird, like, twisted logic where... I think like, the guy, like, his thing is kind of that, you know what I mean? So he was applying it to this. It's it, like, was, it was bad. So, yeah, the point was that, like, that's where the reporting was. I mean, I don't think you can call this reporting. This yeah. is just like that was opinion article writing and you <laughs> until know. Hu Jintao was like practically picked up and dragged away. I, I mean, I don't know if he was picked up and dragged. They, he, they crushed him into a ball <laughs> and dribbled, dribbled it. Uh -huh, because this is a Looney Tunes cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, he was obviously like confused and not doing well. So then you had the people who were saying eh, it's because he was sick and other people being like, oh, it's not, be there's something else going on. And then we were like, it could be both. Yeah. And like he was, he was seen like, I think later that week at a party meeting, his son like gave a speech somewhere. He was featured on the CCTV news. Yeah, that like, day, which these are things that aren't happen. These don't happen if somebody was actually purged. Yeah, he was at Hu Jin, I mean, not Hu Jin, Hu Jintao was at Jiang Zemin's funeral prominently. Yeah. yeah, like it's, so, yeah. Yeah, like the, I think that was again one where like our calm, level-headed Looney Tune analogies <laughs> won the day. <laughs> Am I right? Why do I have Looney Tunes in my head? Oh, I've been watching Babylon 5. 
that has something to do with one of the characters has like a particular fondness of looney tunes which is weird because that's like a 500 year old show at that point (laughs) but Uh, hey i mean i guess like some people like you know shakespeare shakespeare is like a thousand years old or something uh not quite it's a shakespeare is a 500 year old show at this point not quite. Highly Close. recommend Babylon Closer 5. to you. I, I highly I recommend you. Shakespeare. He was actually like mm-hmm. good at writing stuff. It was really interesting back in the day, you know, when when I used to go to his shows at the Globe. I'm not even sure what that joke is supposed to be about. Are you a vampire? <laughs> is that what the... <laughs> no, Shelley, the world is a vampire. <laughs> smashing, pumpkins, smashing pumpkins reference, everybody. Yeah. I really, I really should just uh, stop talking. Maybe sort of lock down my jokes. Hmm. Was anything else locked down this year, Matt? No. <laughs> was that Scooby Doo? I started to do Looney Tunes, but you know, that was Scooby Doo, right? Uh, that that <laughs> if I had to say that was anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>